Hi, everybody. I'm Casey St. Charnez, here on location at Isleta Pueblo with Charlie Jojola. You're about to see the 1912 Biograph release, A Pueblo Legend, with Mary Pickford as an Indian maiden. But first, to set the scene, I have a few questions for Charlie about the making of the picture and how its acceptance on the Pueblo would be taken today. Charlie, you weren't around for the making of the picture, but I'm sure you have a lot of memories of things that have been told to you about it. Uh, what is your outstanding recollection of what movies were like in 1912? Uh, at the time, it was during the frontier days of the filming industry. And uh, I don't believe anybody in the Pueblo had seen the picture. I myself didn't know anything about it until uh, uh, they, sh they showed me the uh, tape from uh, the uh, New Mexico State Library. So there were no theaters around here, and people no. on the Pueblo largely did not even know what the film uh, medium was. Yeah, that's right. So when Griffith marched in with his troop of players and his crew, people really didn't know what to expect. What kind of uh, reception do you suppose they were I given? I suppose they came in here, and what I've read about the film, I would think they may not have had proper clearance with the tribal authorities to proceed with the filming because uh, later, I mean, it tells where uh, they were offended by the custom that they were wearing, where one of them came dancing through with the skirt with bells down the bottom. And the people thought uh, that they were uh, being uh, made fun of. So they had to stop it, and they told them to clear out of the reservation. And uh, they detained D.W. Griffith uh, for about four hours in their uh, court chamber and uh, he tried to buy his way out for $2,000. That's quite a sum. No, nah, but they didn't accept. All the money that they had, the tribe did not accept. So they, 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 they secreted the film, got word to Mary Pickford, and secreted the, the film, and she was asked to march out like she was, uh, uh, they were still filming. And he tells about where she was so scared that people were looking at her through the crevices and every which way and expect just about anything to happen. So uh, she went, uh, so they cleared away and the film was, I don't guess, like I said earlier, people know anything about the film. I take it the film then was not very well researched. I don't, uh, I don't think, yeah, it was not researched. They admit that. It was just one of those overnight ideas to come out and do something like they did in a film. What was their intent then? Just mindless entertainment for the masses? No, I suppose, I suppose like anything that, that's being invented or developed, you know, will have some meaning. Right now the film does not make sense. It's a silent type picture. And they do, do their act, but it's pantomime. More or less, you have to figure out what they're doing. We are standing in front of what could very easily have been a set for a Pueblo legend. Now, this was not a real set. This was somebody's home. I use the word set very loosely because Griffith just waltzed in with his crew after getting off the train in front of the Harvey House in Albuquerque. Ten minutes later, they were here at Isleta Pueblo. And then 15 minutes after that, they were shooting, using everything they could find as a real location. What do you suppose their intent was in shooting a picture on location like this? Well, of course, the intent was to satisfy the people viewing it. What kind of errors did the filmmakers make? Well, really, and really, the, the type of apparel that the, the cast was wearing uh, was not anything. It was near, but not, not what the people wear as a custom. I understand one of the, the uh, or the Frenchman that was in the role uh, came came down here with the wearing a skirt with bells on them down the bottom, which offended the the tribe, the Indians. Were any of the costumes or the dances accurate? Uh, no, they were not. Even those were not accurate. We do have similar dances, but it's usually men and women. Uh, dancing, and this was nowhere near that. So they just made everything up? They, they made everything up. No wonder the council threw Griffith out after a couple of days, I would yeah, too. I guess so. What do you think people would think today seeing it? 
Well, I think it would be comical more or less than entertainment to make anything out of it. It's just people, do, uh, the, the, the people taking part in a picture just doing their act, which is very, very funny in my way of thinking. Well, you laughed. You think it's funny. I thought yeah. it was funny, but yeah. do you think there would be any anger towards the film? Except if it's trying to deploy uh, uh, their own image uh, against the tribe. Many of the films that are developed uh, in the past at, were, were so that it, it uh, was not, uh, they were not real as what the Indians should be or could be. What do you suppose it would be like if a movie company drove in today and said, we want to shoot a movie on the Pueblo? What would the uh, council and the governor say to that? Well, we have a better system now where uh, we have to clear through the authority to make any pictures in the uh, in a village, and uh, then of course we have to be aware of the privacy of the people. We don't uh, take their picture if they walk across the road or something like that. So it it's entirely private. And but they they did make a picture here a while back. I'm not sure what the name of it was, but uh, it was taken near or around the plaza. And the filmmakers managed to survive that one without being thrown yes, off. Yes, yes, it was, it was more current than the time where all of this was, was foreign, you know. It's, there's no such a thing, I guess. Even in my days in the city of Albuquerque, they had one, one uh, theater, which they called Pastime, and they, I did see uh, silent pictures like this. Do you think that the image of the Native American has changed at all in motion pictures since this picture was released in 1912? Uh, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Sometimes it benefits the Indians. Uh, I may go back a little bit and try to relate this uh, with earlier history when the um, frontiersmen uh, came west of the Mississippi and they made contact with the Indians. At the time, uh, they uh, seen the Indians, mostly were nomad Indians up in the north around the Sioux country and that sort, is they began to form an idea which they relate back to civil, so-called civilization of the colonies, that the Indians were shiftless, they were, uh, they were lazy, uh, they were savages, and the like. Now, um, then again, in the eastern part of the, of the nation, where they met up with the Indians, now those in, from there, the Indians were sort of dramatized uh, with uh, their appearances and the lifestyle that they had, which uh, today sometimes they try to imitate uh, when they make pictures of the nice background of uh, of the uh, red man in the back and whatever they're trying to, to dramatize. Well, certainly Griffith did not invent these errors. He was only compounding them, some of which are compounded even till today. But still in all, we've said just about everything we can say about this picture. Now we'll let the movie speak for itself. <laughs>